A blessed and wonderful day to everyone who is watching, especially to our grade 11 students. Today, we are back again to learn something new and exciting. This is Teacher Rahelio, and please keep on watching for today's lesson. But before we proceed, let us first have a short prayer. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Let's pray. Our Lord God in heaven, thank you for the new day you bestowed upon us. Until this moment, we still have our borrowed life and strength from you. We worship and praise your holy name. This moment, we will continue to study and acquire new knowledge. May you bless our students with the wit to brain to think fast and an inquiring mind to be curious in whatever knowledge they will learn today. We hope that you heard our prayer. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. How are you today, class? Are you now ready to learn? If so, here are some tips I want you to keep in mind first. Number one, prepare your learning activity sheets in Empowerment Technologies Quarter 1 for weeks 7 to 8. Also, prepare your own pen and a separate sheet of paper in order for you to take down important notes during the discussion. Number two, find a well-lit and peaceful area where you can be comfortable while listening and watching. Number three, listen carefully and don't skip anything in this video so that you can fully understand the lesson. Lastly, if there is something you don't understand, you can go back to any part of the video lesson or you can ask directly to your subject teacher. Now, I am sure that you are ready to continue watching and listening to our video lesson. Let's start! Since this is going to be your last lesson for this quarter, let us first have a review of what we have learned so far from the previous weeks. In weeks 1 and 2, you have learned about ICT, the internet, and the World Wide Web. You also discovered about the many online platforms and sites present in the internet nowadays, as well as applying online safety, ethics, and etiquette practice in the use of these ICTs. For weeks 3 to 4, you were taught on how to effectively use the internet as a tool for research and information gathering. You learned on using search engines and logic, using tags, as well as identifying URLs and domains. You were also introduced to the use of common productivity tools such as Microsoft Office that help create and develop documents, presentations, and spreadsheets. And from weeks 5 to 6, you were able to apply your gained knowledge by creating an original ICT content in Microsoft Word using advanced techniques. Furthermore, you were introduced to the basic principles of graphics and layout in order to not just boost your digital creativity but also evaluate other online resources based on these principles. And right now, for week 7 to 8, our lesson is going to be about collaborative ICT development. What are the objectives of today's lesson? Evaluate the quality, value, and appropriateness of peers existing or previously developed ICT content in relation to the theme or intended audience or viewer of an ICT project. Share and showcase existing or previously developed material in the form of a collaboratively designed newsletter or blog site intended for specific audience or viewer. What do you know about collaborative ICT development? Let's try to answer these 10 questions about our new topic. Remember, select the letter of your best answer among the given choices and write it in your answer sheet. Number 1. It is an online publication that contains information, database, and updates that is intended to a special group of viewers. Is it A. Google Chrome, B. Mozilla Firefox, C. Web News, or D. Web Page. Number 2. Which of the following is not an aim for online collaboration tool? 
Is it A. Able to be physically together B. Communication online C. Preventing distance barrier or D. Productivity Number 3. A tool classified in the Microsoft Office that is used to make document type of files and is usually end in that docx extension. Is it A. Microsoft Excel B. Microsoft PowerPoint C. Microsoft Publisher or D. Microsoft Word Number 4. A tool under Microsoft Office that aims to make calculations through cells packed in a particular workspace called spreadsheets. Is it A. Microsoft Excel B. Microsoft PowerPoint C. Microsoft Publisher or D. Microsoft Word Number 5. Which is not a function of blogs as one of the collaborative tools? Is it A. Allows user to post updates B. Allows multiple people for contribution C. Allows admin to read, edit, add, and delete posts or D. Allow blogs that includes media file types like images and videos. What does ICT stands for? Is it A. Information and Communication Technology B. Information and Connection Technology C. Information and Copyright Technical or D. Information and Copyright Technology Number 7. HTML means A. Hypertech Mark Location B. Hypertech Mark Application C. Hypertext Mark Language or D. Hypertext Markup Language Number 8. The following are the sources of information except A. Computer B. Mobile Phone C. Printer or D. Television Number 9. Collaborative ICT enables a person to be the following except A. Enhances rate for interactivity B. Give ambiguous instructions and outcomes C. Enables learners to establish common goals or D. Promotes development for interpersonal communication Number 10. The following are platforms used for collaborative ICT development except A. Blogs B. Ebooks, C. Magazines, D. Microsoft Office. Very good. Let's now start discussing our new lesson. To be able to understand what is going on around collaborative ICT development, you must know first what is a web page. A web page is a document written in HTML or a hypertext markup language that can be made accessible through the use of internet or using an internet browser. In order to understand the definition, here is a sample web page I took from facebook.com. As you can see, it looks like a document, right? It has text, images, videos, hyperlinks, proper layouting, and design. Back to our definition, it also says that the web page is written in HTML. But you may ask, what is HTML and what does it even look like? HTML in its simplest definition is a tool used to make and create web pages. HTML by itself is a computer code. So it looks like this. It doesn't look like the web page before. What happened? That's because the computer reads this code and then, with the use of other tools, converts it into a user friendly and readable web page that we can browse through for common users like you and me. So, in a brief summary, HTML is the backbone of any web page. Now, going to the last parts of the definition. A web page is made accessible through the use of internet. As what you have learned in weeks 1 to 2, what is the internet? The internet is the global system of interconnected computer networks that uses internet protocols to communicate between networks and devices. This means that a web page on the internet can be accessed by anyone in the digital world. But how can you access or view a web page on the internet? Of course, 
by using internet browsers. Some of the most commonly used browsers are Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Microsoft Edge, Opera, and Apple Safari. But let's say you have a Chrome browser installed on your phone and you want to visit the web page of Blair Island. What are you going to do? First, you may want to open your browser. Next, enter the URL address of the page you want to visit. In this case, it's BlairIsland.com. And voila! You are now on the Billion Island web page. Remember, a web page is accessed through the use of a unique URL or uniform resource locator address, such as Facebook.com or BillionIsland.com. A web page can take many forms. It can be developed into an online publication or an online newsletter containing news of interest chiefly to a specific group. Some examples are Philippine Daily Inquirer for day-to-day -day local and international news, and Vogue for latest fashion trends. Since the web page is a primary source of information dissemination in the online community, different platforms are made to make users and viewers share information and build collaboration connection with one another. This is where collaborative ICT development takes place. Online collaborative tools comes in different kinds of platforms used for ICT development. But what are the goals of these platforms? Why do we need these platforms when we collaborate online? Here are three reasons why. First, it enables users and administrators promote interpersonal communication. Second, it enhances interactivity. Third, it helps establish common goals that will result to greater outcomes of ICT readiness on an individual or group. In summary, these platforms make online ICT collaboration easy, productive, and efficient. So now, what are the platforms we can use for our collaborative ICT development? There are different types of platforms for different purposes. These platforms may be currently used to host newsletters and similar ICT content-related information. This includes, but not limited to, as follows. For presentation and visualization, you can use Prezi, Zoho, SlideShare, and MindMeister. For cloud computing, we have Google Apps. For social media venues, there is Facebook Pages, Tumblr, Instagram, and Pinterest. For web page development, Wix, Webly, and Google Sites are available. Meanwhile, for blogging or publisher sites, Blogger, WordPress, LiveJournal, Isu, and Google Sites are commonly used. There are many more out there, and a wide variety of platforms to choose contribute significantly to better accessing and working collaboration through peers with the use of ICT. Well done learners! Now, let's apply the knowledge you have learned from today's video lesson. Your activity is going to be about crafting an ICT content through an online platform. And in this case, you are going to use the most popular video sharing platform, YouTube. Here are the directions you need to follow for this task. Number 1. Select a topic in your favorite subject. It can either be English, Math, Science, Filipino, and etc. For example, I have chosen science as my favorite subject. My topic is about categories of rocks. Also, a note for UMS and TVL AFA students, you can also choose from the other subjects in your current strand or specialization. In addition, use the necessary language, English or Filipino, based on the subject and topic you have chosen. Number 2. Create a page on YouTube. Number 3. Create a 10-minute video discussing about the topic you have chosen. Make your videos creative by applying different effects to make it unique. Remember to follow the guide in the rubrics below. Here are the rubrics for your video discussion. The first criteria is knowledge, 25%, shows understanding and mastery of the topic. The second criteria is attitude, 25%. Video content have proper netiquette. The third criteria is creativity, 
25%, unique design and the video content. And the last criteria is timeliness, 25%, follow the allotted time, a total of 100%. Number 4. Upload your video into your YouTube channel or page and share it by sending the link to your subject teacher. You can send the link of your uploaded video to my Facebook page. Here is the link. Very good! Let us now assess your work. Find a partner, preferably your classmate, and share your work with him or her. And let him or her evaluate your video discussion using the same rubrics applied in the previous activity. Write his or her rating in your paper. Follow the format as shown. Well done class! Now, you can answer the Let's Evaluate portion found in your learning activity sheet and answer the questions based on what you have learned from today's lesson. Don't forget to write down your answers in your piece of paper. So now that we have concluded our video lesson for week 7 to 8, I want you to ask yourself, what new information have I learned from this lesson and how will I apply this in the digital world? Again, remember to write your answers in your paper. And that's it for today. I hope that you learned something new and exciting and I hope to see you again in the next lesson. Goodbye class!